Alright guys, today we're going to be covering some Nuclear Craft. So Nuclear Craft is a self-contained mod, meaning that it contains everything that it needs to properly function. So it generates its own ores, it has its own machinery, it's got all the other bits that it needs and doesn't rely on anything else. That being said, it can use uranium ore and other ores from other mods. So essentially what it is, is it's a power generation mod focusing on nuclear reactions, both fission and fusion. So there are fission reactors, such as this behemoth right here, and then there are fusion reactors, such as this guy right here. And as you can see, it's got tons of different information and tons of different fields, each with their own stats. Additionally, it's also got a sort of radiation mechanic. Nuclear reactors will produce radiation, which irradiates a chunk and then sort of spreads out. And not only that, but if you have, say, a bunch of nuclear pellets on you, you can see that the stack has 65 rads per tick, which is incredibly high. You can see that down in the lower left corner, right about here, I'm getting irradiated. And if you drop this stuff on the ground, it's going to irradiate the landscape. So it can be very dangerous and can be used for griefing. Now this sort of introduction is only to cover sort of the very basic of reactor designs. I've only myself been playing around with it a little bit. There are also salt reactors and all sorts of different things, but I'm only going to focus on the basic dry reactors here. So this guy right here is kind of an interesting one. Um, as you can see on to the left, we can see the cooling rate. So this will cool 9,460 heat per tick. Don't ask me what that is. It could be Celsius or whatever. If we stick this in here. We can see that it's generating a bunch of heat. And we're gonna shut that off because if you don't, your reactor actually ends up like this with a bunch of corium just spewing everywhere. And it's just a whole mess that you don't wanna deal with. But you can see that there's a lot of different things going on here. So first of all, based off this highly enriched Californium 249, we are in excess of 7,000 heat per tick, meaning that this bar will go up and up and up until it melts down. But we are generating 11,232 RF a tick. Now if we look at the HECF, which is right about here, we can see that it produces a base power 864 RF a tick and produces 696 heat per tick. So why are these numbers different? Well, it's based on the reactor design. So in the reactor, you have reactor cells, which actually store the fuel. The more reactor cells there are, the faster it goes through the fuel. And if these reactor cells are together, it becomes more efficient, produces more power, but also produces more heat. And then to the sides, we have coolers. And each cooler has a specific set of rules. For example, the gold cooler can only work with if it's in touching active redstone and water coolers, and the iron only with gold, and enderium only if it's touching three casings. Very, very complicated. You can go nuts with this stuff. And another side note is every single one of these pellets becomes depleted and then you can har crack those pellets open and harvest the various isotopes in there. So you might only be able to, say, burn through thorium for a while, but after you get enough and it gets depleted, you get all sorts of different products from it. So if we were to just press, say, U on the TBU, and we'd look to fuel reprocessor, you get 233, 235, fissile neptunium, and all sorts of stuff. So really, just because you ran out of one sort of fuel does not mean you are done. And then to the side here is the fusion reactor. Now the fusion reactor is quite interesting. You have electromagnets here that must always be charged to keep the plasma within the machine. And then you have the machine itself. So currently I've got hydrogen in here. And if we take this creative capacitor, stick it on here, you can see that the temperature will start to increase. Pop that, start to increase, you start hearing the noise, it's chewing through everything. 
and it will produce power. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with this version. It's not producing anything, but typically it produces huge, vast quantities of power and is typically a much safer alternative to fission. Now, it does take quite a bit. Sorry about the sounds going on. And it really just takes a ton, a ton, a ton of hydrogen to keep this thing filled. But it produces byproducts, deuterium, which you can actually take out and shove it right back in to produce other things like helium-3 and all sorts of other wonderful, magnificent things. You can even use lithium, I believe, and maybe some old boron, but I'm not entirely sure on that. And with fusion reactors, if you don't know, you have to heat them up before they actually start working. But once you actually get it working, it produces enough power to keep itself hot and keeps running on. Now really that's sort of the basics here. Um, with Nuclear Craft it's a sort of interesting mod that at, that adds a lot more than just simply extreme reactors formerly known as big reactors. Big reactors you just shoved fuel in there you let it do its thing and whatever. But now you can specifically design your reactors to work off of specific different fuels and all sorts of things and not and sometimes bigger does not always necessarily mean better with something like this it looks pretty small and it is it won't produce nearly as much power as say the other reactors I have around but you can see that the HECF which this time is 251 doesn't produce excess heat you're still in a deficit meaning this reactor is much more versatile than say something like this and if you have a big old reactor like this you can guarantee that unless you've got some very crafty designs you're not going to be burning much more than lowly than leu which is low enriched uranium so i hope you really found this interesting um and hopefully I've kept it simple enough for you to sort of understand what the mod is and whether or not you want to install it. It's a very compatible mod. And before I forget, you should also look under the mod options, search up nuclear, nuclear craft, excuse me, get the config and look at all this sort of stuff because you can change so much about it. Radiation is disabled by default, but I have it enabled and you'll have to restart Minecraft, which can be a tedious process if you've got a large mod pack. But anyways, hopefully you liked it and maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this sort of thing. I'll maybe make a more in-depth tutorial on how to build super efficient reactors with all sorts of other bells and whistles. Anyways, this is, has been Jacob Joy Games and it is your choice to be offended.